eight matchups this week in the college football involve top 25 versus top 25. In other words, how many matchups involving ranked teams playing against one another? The answer is seven. That's right, seven. You got Iowa at Wisconsin. Go Hawkeyes. <laughs> you got Oklahoma State at Iowa State, Ohio State, Michigan State, and you have Alabama against Mississippi State. And included in those matchups are three top 10 games. That's right, three games involving the top 10. You've got Georgia at Auburn, Notre Dame at Miami, and of course the game that we're going to be talking about in a little bit, Oklahoma fifth rated against sixth ranked Texas Christian. The top two teams in the Big 12 going at it in Norman Saturday night, 7 o'clock game on Fox. The point spread was at 7. It's now down to 6.5. The winner of this game, obviously, in very, very good shape to getting to the rebirth of the Big 12 championship game. The loser of this game, well, they're going to have to hope that Iowa State does not run the table because of the Cyclones beat Oklahoma State this week, plus beat Baylor and Kansas State. Then the loser of Saturday's TCU-Oklahoma game is going to be out of luck. Won't make the Big 12 championship game. And as you can tell by the standings, yeah, you got five teams right there, half of the Big 12. Still contending for those two spots in the Big 12 title game. But again, the winner of TCU, Oklahoma, looks like they're in fantastic shape to getting to Arlington and the conference title game. And by the way, staying very much in the thick of things in terms of the college football playoff. Of course, the college football playoff, the top five did not change. Georgia, Alabama, Notre Dame, Clemson, and Oklahoma rounding off the top five. But TCU moving up to number six. And by the way, if you're looking at the history of Oklahoma TCU since the Horned Frogs joined the Big 12, you've had some nail-biters. In fact, they've all been nail-biters. Oklahoma has won four of the five games. You can you see that graphic at the bottom of the screen. But all five games, the winner has won by seven points or less. And that includes last year, in which the Sooners had a 25-point lead in the second half. Remember, at TCU, next thing you know, they cut the lead down to six. And actually, they have the ball. And a shot at driving it down the field in the final minute and a half, a shot at actually pulling off the game. But thankfully, that didn't happen, and the Sooners escaped Fort Worth with the win. So the one thing you can guarantee yourself, if these last five games or anything like this one coming up, it's going to be close, <laughs> even though oh, you will have home field advantage. Weather, by the way, does not look to be too bad. Temperatures in the 50s. Slight chance of rain, okay, 20% chance. So we'll see how that plays out. But as far as air temperature, as far as wind, uh, should not be a factor. And can't ask for more than that, considering that we are heading into mid-November when the weather can do funny things. Well, the Sooners cannot get caught up in what happens outside of the TCU-Oklahoma game. In fact, they get, can't get caught up in what's happening nationally because you probably keep hearing about that school in Wisconsin from Madison called the Badgers. They're undefeated right now. The major conference, obviously, in the Big Ten. And unless something funny happens, it looks like they're going to go to the Big Ten championship game undefeated. Now, that's a problem. And, of course, what makes you even more mad if your school is not Wisconsin and you're in this thing, in other words, you're in the college football playoff discussions. The fact that Wisconsin hasn't played anybody worth a flip. Weak non-conference schedule. And they've had the luxury so far of not having to face a Michigan State or an Ohio State or a Penn State. they got a break on that part of the schedule. So the thing that you have to consider if you're Oklahoma, controlling your own fate. Okay? You can't get caught up in what's happening with Notre Dame, with the ACC, with the SEC, and with Wisconsin. you got to take care of your own stuff, do your own work, see how this thing plays out, because typically, even though we're getting into the later part of the season, these things usually play itself out. Okay, So the Sooners cannot get caught up in all the hoopla, because it can become a distraction, and it can, in fact, um, be detrimental in your preparation for this Saturday's game. Believe me, you'll have your hands full enough with TCU on both sides of the ball, especially when you go against that Horn Frog defense, don't get caught up in those outside elements and the ESPN stuff about them talking about the playoff. Hey, once the regular season's over, once the conference championship game's over, then at that point, you can start thinking about the national pitcher. But right now, that national pitcher has to take care of itself. Talking about the Sooners, um, unfortunately, they will not have Khalil Hogden. 
um, a safety injured. He will not be available. And to make matters even worse, you will not have Will Johnson for the first half of the TCU game because of that controversial um, targeting call that happened in the fourth quarter of the Oklahoma State game. It, that call still pisses me off, but it's happened, and Johnson will not be available until the third quarter. I'll be curious to see how TCU attacks that secondary now that the Horn Frogs and everybody knows, especially Oklahoma, that you will not have Will Johnson for quarters one and two. Remember, this is a secondary that not only has been shorthanded, because remember they lost Jordan Parker, the corner at the beginning of the season. And remember Parrish Cobb, um, you know, his services pretty much kaput because of off the field stupid stuff. So you're already thin as far as experience. This means obviously you're going to see a lot more of Trey Norwood. You're going to see a lot more of Trey Brown at the corners. As far as safety, you're going to see um, more of Robert Barnes as well. So the younger guys have to be able to contribute, have to be able to stay with the TCU receivers. And, again, you'll have Will Johnson come quarter number three. Again, they've got to modify that targeting rule. Sometimes it lacks that simple term called common sense. But enough about that, okay? Um, good news, though, as far as the defense for the Sooners, it looks like you will have the services of uh, Neville Gallimore, your uh, defensive lineman, already this year with three sacks. But you'll have him back, and we'll see if he can make a contribution and get pressure on quarterback uh, Kenny Hill. Um, so far, the Sooner defensive players, we've seen them get involved in terms of sacks. Obo with eight sacks this year, and DJ Ward uh, with four and a half sacks. Ward's played um, no, not too badly as far as getting to the QB these last couple of games. Well, let's chit-chat first about Oklahoma's offense when they have the ball against TCU's D. I know the rankings say OU number five, TCU number six, according to the college football playoff rankings. In reality, folks, it's number one versus number one when OU has the ball. I say this because OU's number one in the country in total offense. But TCU, they're number one in the country in total defense. So something will have to give come Saturday night in Norman. Sooners. Of course, passing, they're also number one in the country. But I've said it before, and again, it's going to sound repetitive, but the Sooners, if they don't run the ball effectively against TCU, they will lose this game. Simple, period. TCU only gives up 69 yards per game on the ground. Only 69. And that's not all either. TCU has already sacked the quarterback 28 times. That's scary. It's a defense that... Returned a lot from last year, and, you know, they've got guys that can get to the quarterback. You're talking about Ben Monagu, six and a half sacks already this season. Five sacks for Mac Boson, and a veteran in the linebacker in Traven Howard. TCU gets to the ball, period. And Lincoln Riley, during his press conference this week, he kind of called out the Oklahoma offensive line a little bit because, you know, he said that the offensive line did not play up to its capability, which is the standard. And Oklahoma's got one of the best, if not the best, offensive lines in all of college football. But last week in that third quarter, you didn't see much of a ground attack. You didn't see much as far as pass protection, even though I know at times um, Mayfield holds the ball a little bit longer than desired. Still, though, it was not one of Oklahoma's best performances on the offensive line throughout much of the third quarter and part of that fourth quarter. So he knows that the offensive line will have to play their biggest in a game like this because this will be one of the most, if not most, talented defenses they've seen this season. They faced Ohio State. They faced a good defense in Texas. But TCU, their their defense is maybe above those two defenses right now as far as how the Horned Frogs are playing. Remember last week, I know Texas' offense isn't great, but Texas had no rushing attack at all in last week's Horned Frog win, 24-7. Um, wasn't a good game as far as passing either for the Longhorn offense. So TCU was able to control that game because Texas could not move the ball with the flip in that matchup. TCU was in control. So Trey Sermon, you've got Rodney Anderson, both averaging over six yards per carry. Um, they need to have performances pretty similar. If you can't get the six yards a carry, at least close to five in a game like this. Otherwise, going to be third and long way too often. Remember last week, as great as Baker Mayfield was, and right now he's the front runner of the Heisman Trophy, okay? And, you know, deservedly so. Threw 598 yards last week, a school record for one game. But both of his interceptions happened on third and long. So that right there means that the running game 
first and foremost. Otherwise, TCU will commit more players to stopping the pass. And I promise you this much, I would be shocked if Baker has the opportunity to hold the ball for four, five, six seconds in the pocket like he did against Oklahoma State. TCU defensively is a lot more talented than Oklahoma State and almost every defense that the Sooners have faced up to this point. So there you have it on offense. Defense, Oklahoma defense, three words. Please get better. Please get better. It wasn't just the secondary, which had issues with Oklahoma State receivers running every which way, including loose, but also, too, being able to contain the ground attack. TCU has speed in that backfield. Yes, Kyle Hicks did not play in that Oklahoma State victory a few weeks ago in which TCU went to Stillwater and at that time stunned college football. Darius Anderson, he's just as capable. He's just as fast, and he's able to attack those holes. TCU ran for over 200 yards against Oklahoma State. And, that, and again, you know, the Cowboys were very good against the run um, entering that game and, and even after that game. But on that day, TCU shredded Oklahoma State with the ground attack. And that makes it easier for the quarterback of the Horned Frogs, Kenny Hill. Remember, you know, you know, I said that Kenny Hill last year was inconsistent. And you look at his numbers. I mean, one game he would throw for four or five touchdowns. The next game he'd throw for four or five interceptions. Remember, TCU's only lost this year. Iowa State did a good job on the Horned Frogs, limiting them to no offensive touchdowns, cutting down the big plays, and forcing mistakes, turnovers. TCU would march the ball, but would come away empty-handed. Oklahoma needs to find a way to force those turnovers, like they did in the second half last week against Oklahoma State. That was brilliant. The interception in the end zone, and then prior to that in that third quarter, you know, you know, forcing a loose ball and, you know, and getting three points. At that time, you know, you're thinking it's just three points off a turnover, but every point mattered in that bedlam win. So, you know, there's going to be times in which Oklahoma, I know, is not going to be able to stop TCU, but we'll see if the young guys can step up if the veterans, you know, if a guy like Jordan Thomas continues to get burned, okay, if Parnell Motley, who's been good so far this year, but last week he was terrible, he got toasted. If those guys can't step up, you got to have Trey Brown, you got to have um, the other Trey as well, Trey Norwood. They've got to be able to come through. And of course, the safety, the newer guy, talking about Robert Barnes. You know, because in a game like this where you're not going to have Will Johnson those first two quarters, where you're not going to have Khalil Hogg to do the injury, yeah, a lot of the focus will be on that secondary to get some victories, okay? You know, you're going to give up points in a game like this. You'll give up yardage. But there has to be moments, too, where you turn TCU away. You can't just leave it all up to the offense to bail the defense out. And the rush defense, they've got to be able to clog those lanes up. It will help to have Neville Gallimore back. But this is not the same Kenny Hill at quarterback we've seen before. His numbers may not be just great, but the one number that has changed for Kenny Hill, he doesn't throw near as many picks. Last year, he threw 13 interceptions. This year, after nine games, only five. So TCU, with the exception of the Iowa State game, does not beat itself. Oklahoma will have to earn this one because I doubt that TCU – is going to have a lot of turnovers in this matchup. Final thoughts on this game. As I mentioned before, the last five matchups, seven points or less, has been the margin of victory with OU winning four of the five. TCU has been terrific on the road in recent years, and I think six and a half points in a game like this is too many. But the Sooners with Baker Mayfield, Sooners with that ground attack, and with the emergence of Hollywood last week, Marquise Brown and the big game he had, the capability that C.D. Lamb still shows, and that security blanket and Mark Andrews look for Oklahoma to get points in this game. They'll give up points, but home field advantage and the fact that the Sooner team these last couple of years has been of a championship caliber, look for that to continue. I look for Oklahoma to win the game. I'm going to go 38-35. Don't forget about my post-game show. It'll be very, very late um, Saturday night or early Sunday morning, very early, because this game, I promise you, is going to be about a four-hour doozy, which means it won't end until about 11 o'clock Saturday night. So um, my post game, yeah, it's going to be very late or very early in the morning. But I will have it for you, um, hopefully not long after the game. And don't forget about my three picks, me against the coin. I'll have that later this week on this very web page. It's going to be a fun game between two very good teams. Boomer Center.